Theodore, Dr. Seuss, Geisel, used his children's literature to assist children in exploring life lessons in early childhood. In exchanging these ideas, his writings have impacted children around the world. On Wednesday, March 2, 1904, on Howard Street in Springfield, Massachusetts, Theodore Geisel was born to Henrietta Geisel and Theodore Robert. This baby boy would become world famous under the name of Dr. Seuss many years later. During his childhood, his mother would chant rhymes to him and his sister to soothe them to sleep. It is to this that he credits his ability and desire to create rhymes. It was his mother's dream for Theodore and his sister to graduate college. Her hope was that, one day, he may even become Dr. Geisel. As a child, he didn't necessarily fit in with the other children. He spoke both German and English because his grandparents were from Germany. This also made him different because, unlike most other kids, his family hadn't been in America for generations. He was made fun of and teased for this. Though he loved to draw and doodle, he was bored by the rules and guidelines that his teacher made him follow when in art class. He simply loved to draw whimsical things, like dogs with eight legs. One day, his teacher saw these drawings and told him he would never succeed as an artist. He dropped out of the class the same day. Theodore left high school as a teenager to attend Dartmouth College. There, he became editor-in-chief of The Jack-O-Lanter, the Dartmouth humor magazine. Once he got into trouble on campus, he began to sign his work Seuss, using his mother's maiden name. This was the first time that he used the pen name Seuss. After attending Dartmouth, he attended Oxford University in England. He did this to please his father, who wanted him to be a college professor. One day he was doodling, and it happened to be a cow with wings, just one of his silly drawings. One student saw the drawing and complimented him on it by saying, You're crazy to be a professor. What you really want to do is draw. This person was Helen Palmer, who would later become his first wife. His studies bored him, so he didn't stay at Oxford for long. He soon left to go tour Europe instead. After his engagement to Helen Palmer, he refused to even consider marriage until he was receiving a steady income. He made jokes and cartoons and sent them off to various magazines. Few magazines showed interest in his illustrations, which led to his becoming depressed and returning home to Springfield. There, he sent out letters to multiple New York magazines, offering different poems and cartoons. After a long wait of no one accepting his offer, he had a selection of his cartoons published. He signed them Seuss, using his pen name once again. That was the beginning to his official cartoon and writing career. Before his fame in children's books, in the early 1940s, during World War II, Dr. Seuss felt the need to support his country without being involved in the military. So, in 1941, he began publishing cartoons expressing his feelings on the war. From 1941 through 1943, he published hundreds of these cartoons. Subjects include Hitler, the U.S. military, saving bonds and stamps, political corruption, and communism. Titles to some of these works include The Tiller of the Soil, one concerning Adolf Hitler, Measuring Up a Couple of Prospects, one about domestic security, and How'd I Get in This Danged Thing? one about the Macassar Strait. It was through these cartoons that he brought to light issues he felt needed to be addressed and exposed some of the truth about the war. On December 21st, 1937, his first children's book was published. This was, And To Think That I Saw It on Mulberry Street. The book was rejected 27 times before finally being published. On his way back from his travels in Europe, he was stuck on a boat listening to the engine. With the rhythm of the engine stuck in his head, he began writing down that rhythm. 
Eventually, that rhythm in his head turned into the 32-page children's book that got him his start in children's literature. This book is about a young boy, Marco, who wants to tell his father about what he encountered walking home from school that day. Marco didn't see anything particularly interesting, though, but that won't stop him. He then comes up with a story to tell his father. His imagination takes him to incredible places, with the horse he saw with a wagon turning into a zebra, and then that zebra into a reindeer, and so on. This book could carry the message to young children of what wonderful things can happen when you explore your imagination. Many of Dr. Seuss's books have messages intended for young readers. The Lorax is about being aware of the planet and to take care of it. If I Ran the Circus has themes of business responsibility and management concepts. Almost all of his works have meanings. Horton Hears a Who is about how everyone is important, no matter who they are. The Sneetches follows the same concepts, focusing more on the theme of racial or religious discrimination. Other of Dr. Seuss's books are thought to be about events that were occurring in the time they were written. For example, Yertle the Turtle had been admitted by Dr. Seuss to be about Hitler. In this story, the power-hungry turtle is allegedly a direct representation of the dictator. Horton Hears a Who is also about the times of war that the world was experiencing. Dr. Seuss wrote this book after visiting war-torn Japan, specifically Hiroshima. This book is supposed to have shed light on America's treatment of post-war Japan. Through his books, Dr. Seuss would help bring to light problems that he was seeing in the world at the time, and possibly what people could have done to resolve them. He was the first to even explore the idea of having these themes in children's books. Today, Dr. Seuss's legacy continues. National Read Across America Day is the largest reading event in the United States, and it takes place every year near Dr. Seuss's birthday, March 2nd. Read Across America Day encourages children across America to explore literature. Dr. Seuss's books are perfect for this because not only can children learn lessons from them, but his books can also teach kids that reading, expanding, and enhancing their vocabularies can be fun by reading entertaining and interesting books like his. He does this with his whimsical illustrations, boisterous rhymes, and clever use of words. I see this as his biggest impact because it is an unofficial national holiday and has influenced so many people. It has also had very important people help and participate in Read Across America Day, including First Lady Michelle Obama. Fox, not with a fox, not in a house, not with a mouse. I would not eat them here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. I would not eat green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam. I. Even though he died in 1991, Dr. Seuss's legacy is still in action today, helping to educate children across the nation. This is important because his books were part of why children started reading at a young age. Before him, reading levels in schools were down because children's books were seen as boring and not worth reading. His books got children to read again which is possibly the most important and profound impact of all. Dr. Seuss left a profound legacy on children's literature. His true passion was art and writing. He explored and revolutionized children's literature and set new expectations that still apply today. His books have deepened meanings that help children learn about serious situations and circumstances while in a non-threatening world that he creates in his books. This is important because it is at a point in their lives when children's brains will subconsciously take these lessons and apply them to life. He explored children's literature, and in exchange, he impacted countless kids' lives.